Hi, welcome to our podcast today. My name is Charles Rogel. I'm the Vice President of Product Development, and I also work as a Senior Consultant here at DecisionWise. Today I'm going to be sharing with you the latest results from our 2018 State of Employee Engagement Report. This report is a comprehensive look at employee engagement practices from more than 180 companies around the world. So let me give you kind of a, a rundown or overview of what we did to collect this data. Um, essentially, we conducted a survey that was consisted of about 30 questions that we sent out to um, uh, HR leaders around the world to understand perceptions around employee engagement, what they're doing to improve employee engagement, how they're measuring engagement, and then we, we called out of this the best practices of those that are doing well at improving engagement within their organizations. So the, the survey and this report is broken up into several sections. Um, first, I'll give you a brief overview of who took the survey, um, uh, kind of to give you an idea of how hopefully robust this data set is. And so again, 180 companies participated. The revenue and employee size varied um, across, uh, across all the parameters there. So from less than a million to over 5 billion in revenue size, um, we had from less than 25 employees to over 10,000 employees. But the bulk of the participants were from medium to large size companies. So over 500 employees for the most part. And um, in terms of department and job title, we're talking mostly people in human resources and mostly managers in human resources. So I'd say about 75 percent um, of the, the data set were in actually 66 percent were human resources, but there were some others that were related uh, in that field as well. So it's a good data set. I think we, we got data and information from the right group who can really speak to employee engagement in the organization. Now, part of what we tried to understand are the perceptions regarding engagement in the organization. We wanted to know how important uh, employee engagement is to companies, specifically senior leaders and managers. And so we asked these HR leaders how familiar they were specifically with employee engagement and then how familiar and how important engagement was to their leadership team. Well, with HR people, 62% uh, said very familiar and 29% said familiar um, to the statement about um, how familiar they are with the term, which isn't surprising. What we also asked is, um, okay, HR person, how important is employee engagement to the executive team? Well, 51% replied that it was very important, 26 said important. So over 75% of executives say that employee engagement is still important or very important in their organization. Now, it changes a little bit when we look at managers. So we asked them, how important is employee engagement to managers in your organization? We got 27% very important and 41% important. So that gives us about 69% uh, important to managers. So it's a little bit harder to kind of um, uh, distill the, this importance of engagement down to all managers within the organization. And that's not very surprising. That trend um, has kind of stayed the same. So we have three years worth of data that we're looking at from, um, from 2000. 16, 17, and 18, and the trends regarding importance and also um, uh, understanding or familiarity with engagement have been pretty even at those numbers. Lastly, we asked in this section, um, in your opinion, what ways does employee engagement benefit organizations in general? Um, and this year was the same as last year, where most HR professionals ranked increasing employee performance as number one increases in employee retention was number two, and then increases in quality were number three. And so this is just a general belief in the benefit of engagement um, overwhelmingly about performance. Next, the, the section, um, there's another, the next section was regarding employee engagement programs. So we wanted to know if, if organizations had a program in place, uh, what they were doing to boost engagement specifically. And so when we asked this overall question, do you have an employee engagement program? And here we're saying kind of a formal program that you've announced in the organization that everyone knows about. 56% of the respondents said yes, 41% said no, and only 3% said don't know. Again, this, um, this trend uh, was the same or, or this response rate was the same over the past three years. Between 52 to 56% said yes to that item um, over time. Now, when we said, then we said, for those of you that don't have an employee engagement program, why don't you? 
the overwhelming response here, uh, 41% of the respond responses here were um, about other competing priorities in the organization. Uh, the next highest one at 38% of the responses was lack of support from the senior leadership team. And the third one was just lack of knowledge about employee engagement. So that's kind of hindering their, their uh, efforts to implement a plan. So one interesting finding was understanding the, the top employee engagement initiatives. So when we asked them what employee engagement specific initiatives have they implemented in the past three years, um, we allowed multiple responses to this question. The highest number of responses fell under employee feedback systems, specifically con conducting employee surveys or collecting feedback from employees around engagement, measuring engagement, basically. Next highest, at 52% of the responses here, were company events and parties, and then there were recognition programs, wellness programs, and then training in general, or general types of training. Um, so those were the top initiatives mentioned um, to boost employee engagement, or that were part of this formal engagement program. Now, the interesting thing is we wanted to know how successful these programs were. So we said, overall, how successful, successful do you feel these programs have been over the past three years? to increase engagement? Well, it was overwhelmingly somewhat successful at 47% of the responses. 22% said successful and 11% said very successful. 13% um, said not successful. So it was interesting to see that about 47 to 50% over the past three years had overwhelmingly said somewhat successful. This leads to some of the other questions in our survey, which tried to get at what is the ROI of engagement? And we're finding that it's difficult for organizations to really tell. So um, they're saying somewhat successful overall. Now, when we get to measuring employee engagement, we had a lot of questions here. And of course, at DecisionWise, we specialize in measuring engagement in organizations. So I wanted to understand trends in measuring engagement and what people are really doing. So one question was, when was the last recent, uh, when was the most recent survey conducted to measure employee engagement in your organization? 52% um, said within the last year, 14% said in the last two years, and 9% said three years or more. 16% um, said never. They hadn't measured engagement yet. So again, this trend, 52%, that ranged in the past three years between 49 to 52%. So about 50% measured engagement within the past year when we've asked that question before. Then we said, well, how many, over how many years has your organization been measuring employee engagement using an employee survey? 27% uh, was the highest response for five years or more. So again, engagement has been around for a while. A lot of companies have been doing this for multiple years. Eight, and then the rest kind of um, petered off. So four or 8% said four years or more, 18% said three years or more. And so it was about, you know, between 10 to 18% um, between your one year, two year, three year, four years. 27% five years or more. So some very experienced people in terms of measuring engagement year over year. Um, I was curious to know if people were just measuring engagement once a year or if they're using pulse surveys or always on surveys. So we asked how frequently does your organization measure, uh, measure engagement using a formal employee survey? 56% um, said annually, so basically one time annually with their engagement survey. That went up a little bit from 49% last year and 52% the year before. But again, about half the companies are saying they use an annual survey. The 16% responded quarterly, that they're doing quarterly surveys. That went up from 8% the year before. And only 4% said always on, so that's been relatively low. Others, um, other high responses, 12% said every two years, and so there's other people doing it less frequently. But for the most part, people are measuring it annually and also maybe including a pulse survey on a quarterly basis. One last bit here, um, one different way of uh, asking this was um, understanding the consistency of measuring engagement. So I, I asked them, what statement best describes your organization? Um, are you consistent, meaning you've measured engagement each year for the last uh, five years? Uh, this was the highest response at 36%. But in a close second was just started. So they just started measuring engagement with the last two years. That was at 35% compared with 36% of those being consistent. And then it drops off. There's those measuring it less consistently over the past 18 months or two years at only 10%. And then some said sporadic. So sporadically over the past five years at 13%. So again, there's a large group that just started and also measured it consistently at about 35%. Um, 
by far, we asked, how do you collect feedback? Is it through an online survey, paper survey, for focus groups? 81% said online. 24% said a paper survey. 29% used uh, focus groups. And 27% of the responses uh, mentioned personal interviews. So that went up. Uh, those three last three categories went up significantly. And even on online surveys, 68% was the response rate last year for online surveys. And it's 81% this year. So that, that even climbed. Um, if you're curious about what a good participation rate is for uh, your annual employee engagement survey, this past year the average participation rate was 78%. That's been pretty consistent. It was 77% last year, 75% the year before. The interesting thing is that 37% of these companies reported a 90% plus participation rate on their survey. So that tells me that they're, they're good at running these things. They've got, got some good experience. And so some people are getting some really stellar turnout on their results in terms of particip participation. We also wanted to know um, how they would uh, quantify or how they would report the overall level of engagement in their organization. So here's how the question was worded. According to your most recent survey results, what percentage of employees are engaged at your company? This includes employees considered to be fully engaged, engaged, or somewhat engaged. And the response here was 64%. So if we're talking about the average level of engagement, this past year, 64% was the response. It was 68% last year and 66% the year before. So it's been relatively even um, overall. Again, this number, um, I trust it more now that we have three years worth of data because this question is rather broad in terms of what we're counting as engaged employees in an organization. But seeing this is uh, actually is, is, is uh, good news for me. It's, it's nice to know that there are more people that are engaged than disengaged. Um, but again, it's holding pretty steady over the past three years. Now, one question that was really important to our research is this next one. It's about in trends and engagement, whether it's going up, going down, or staying the same. So we asked the question, and we said, based on any employee survey results over the past three years, has the overall level of employee engagement in your organization trended upward, downward, or stayed the same? So 42% said it's going up. 13% said it's going down, and 27% said it stayed the same. In terms of trends, um, it's relatively close. Uh, the first year we did this, we only had 31% that said upward instead of 42% this year. And then we had 28% that said down, downward uh, during our first year of doing this, and only 13% this year. So it looks like people are getting a little bit better overall in terms of their trends and engagement. This number might be a little bit... Um, uh, skewed in that, re if you recall, there were uh, a large percentage that said they just measured engagement for the first year this year, and so they could also be reporting by saying, hey, yeah, I guess it went up because this was our first year of doing this. But what we wanted to do is then say, we're going to look at this a little bit later in our research, is what, um, what did these people do differently that have engagement trending upward? So we compared it to a few other questions on our survey, and we'll share with you some of those best practices. The next section, before we get into that analysis, deals with the use of employee engagement results. So conducting a survey is just the beginning of the process. This section really highlights what happens after the results are tallied. So we asked about how broadly the results are shared, who conducts action plans, and if training is provided on employee engagement. So when we asked which gr groups receive the results of the survey, um, there were multiple choices allowed here. We had human resources at 72%. I would expect that to be 100%, but I don't know why we got 72% there. Executive team was at 73%, all managers at 51%, um, and all employees at 52%. So I was kind of surprised to see that only half of managers and half of employees um, get to see the results after they're conducted. That's not a good practice. We recommend that you provide the results to everyone. Then we wanted to know how effective organizations are at creating action plans, like who's involved with it and how effective are they actually at completing an action plan because this again goes to um, creating change in the organization based on feedback. So when we asked what percent of the following groups actually create an action plan, from the executive team it was 70%. 70 That's been relatively stable over the past three years as well. It's ranged from 70 to 75%. The HR team, 70% actually create an action plan. Managers, 62% of managers actually create an action plan. Um, so that's pretty good in terms of uh, rolling out the results. A lot of times that's difficult. Getting buy-in from all managers is especially difficult. 
but it's, you really want to create an action plan at the executive level if you're going to conduct employee survey at least. Uh, we also set, asked, uh, which of the following groups have received training on employee engagement in your organization? So by training, we mean a formal session on what employee engagement is and how to increase it in the organization. So we allowed multiple choices or multiple responses here. 37% um, uh, of the responses said the executive team. 43% uh, were around the HR team. 23% um, all managers, 15% some managers. So we were really curious to know if managers are kind of getting exposure to engagement training. Um, it's relatively low. That's not surprising. That did increase significantly uh, from the year before. So all managers was at 23% this year. It was only 13% the year before. So um, this is a, one of the best practices we found as well that we'll touch on later. But if you're trying to really get people bought into engagement, you need to give them training, especially your managers, on what to do about it um, and not just give them some survey results. This next section deals with the return on investment from your employee engagement initiatives. Uh, we found that organizations really struggled with some of these questions because it's difficult to measure. So first we said, does your organization measure its return on investment for employee engagement programs? And um, the, <laughs> the yes category is, is really concerning because only 10% said yes, they actually measure the ROI for their programs. It was 11% last year and only 9% the year before. So year over year, companies are struggling with actually measuring some type of ROI for engagement. 70% said no, we're not. That's not very surprising because, again, engagement's kind of a, uh, a fluffy concept. It's, it's one of those things that are hard to quantify, so, um, so, so people struggle. I think they, they believe it's important. There's been a lot of research that shows how important it is, but getting some hard metrics within an organization is difficult. We also asked uh, in what ways, so we try to ask this a little bit differently, in what ways have you seen a return on the organization's investment in employee engagement? Um, number one response was higher employee retention. So 33% of the responses said higher retention. Next one was higher performance at 30%. And in third place was improvement in the company brand or image at 22%. Those numbers and all the other items that we, re we saw there were pretty consistent year over year in terms of um, seeing an ROI. Again, we're not asking them to really quantify. We're just saying uh, how what... what, what um, what ways have you seen a return? And I think this is more uh, of a subjective response to that question. Um, another way to look at this, we said, how strongly do you agree with the following statement? Our programs to improve employee engagement uh, have given us the ROI or the results that we've hoped for. This is where it gets a little bit more um, or less, uh, let's see, concrete. So um, here, the agreement, so strongly agree to that statement that we've seen, um, we've seen improvement is 3%. Agree was only 7%. Neither agree or disagree was 26%. So we're sitting on the fence. Disagree, in other words, they haven't seen an ROI, was 26%. And then there was a huge category of 34% of don't knows. So people just don't even know if they're seeing an ROI, which is also common. Not a lot of people are kind of measuring this against other um metrics within the organization. So um, this was really interesting. This is the, the tough question that you might get from a, a CEO or a, a CFO in the organization is where is the money from this? Are we seeing an increase in performance or, or dollars? And um, this is where HR people, I think, are struggling. So let me switch gears here um, in terms of ROI. That, that's kind of the difficult question, I think, that's plaguing organizations for a long time. My only advice there is to start off by looking at turnover in your organization because you can definitely put a number to turnover and look at it across different departments and see where engagement is strong or weak and tie it to your turnover numbers. Um, now we're going to talk about some of the key findings from the results, and, and essentially these are best practices. So we're going to look at those companies that have upward trending employee engagement to see what separates them from the crowd. So first finding, engagement trends and formal versus formal engagement programs. What we did is we looked at those that said they're using a formal engagement program, and so we found that 80% of companies that report employee engagement is trending upward have a formal employee engagement program. That's compared to 64% who stayed the same and 41% where engagement decreased. And so if you have a program in place, you're more likely to see an upward trend in engagement. The next key finding, 
Um, engagement trends, uh, what we did is we compared engagement trends to the types of initiatives to enhance engagement. So again, if you remember the question, we said, what types of employee engagement specific initiatives has your organization implemented in the past three years? Well, those that are conducting employee engagement surveys, 93% uh, of those that said we're doing survey, or sorry, 93% of the, one, of the um, companies with upward trending levels of employee engagement um, uh, also conduct employee engagement surveys. And the finding here is that those with upward trending levels of engagement report using more initiatives than those that stayed the same or decreased. So when we look at the numbers, um, a greater percentage are using employee surveys or hosting company events or parties or doing recognition programs or wellness programs. They just have a broader range of programs in place uh, to boost engagement. So that's not too surprising. You'd expect that to, to, to see an increase. We also compared engagement trends to consistency in measuring engagement. So if you remember that question about how consistently does your organization measure employee engagement, those that are consistent, that measure it yearly, um, we found that 49% uh, in that category have engagement going up compared to 33% that are the same and 29% uh, that went down. So consistency also helps you increase um, the level of engagement in your organization. Next key finding, uh, we looked at engagement trends compared to uh, the question about providing training for managers on employee engagement. What we found is that 31% of companies that report engagement is trending upward train managers on engagement compared to 14% that stayed the same and 18% where engagement decreased. So again, a key finding here. Now it's not huge. 31% of those that provide training to managers had engagement going upwards. Um, that's uh, pretty significant though compared to 14% that stayed the same. So uh, training managers on engagement helps to boost engagement within an organization. And then lastly, we looked at um, engagement trends compared to the types of ROI that people said were, were realized. So if you remember the question again, in what ways have you seen a return on the organization's investment in employee engagement? We allowed multiple responses here. So what we're saying is um, those that had a higher um, level of uh, or upward trending level of engagement, they saw higher employee retention. They saw higher performance. They saw improved product and service quality and company brand image. They, they scored a lot higher in these ca breakout categories than those with um, engagement going down or staying the same. So um, the key takeaway is that companies with increasing levels of employee engagement report higher retention, performance, and quality than those um, that don't. So um, again, that's kind of obvious, right? If engagement's going up, you'd hope to see a greater ROI. Um, and that's what we're seeing here uh, within these organizations. So let me just review this again. A um, couple of key findings here. Number one, um, I was pleased to see that the results were consistent over the past three years. In other words, I didn't see too many differences or spikes or tr in the trending of the data from uh, year over year, which tells me that the data um, is pretty reliable in terms of what we're measuring here, and we're getting a good picture of what's really going on in the industry. Um, second key takeaway don't just measure engagement. A lot of companies measure engagement, maybe do some action planning on the results, but those that have upward trending levels of engagement also have a lot of different programs in place to improve engagement. Third item here, some of you, if you, if you, haven't, if you have a bunch of different programs and you're not seeing much of a change, try training managers on engagement. Help them understand what it means. Help them understand what the drivers are, what the key management behaviors are uh, to improve engagement, and that will um, have a huge impact on your employees. And then uh, number four, um, there is a reported ROI for increased engagement. So engagement goes up, it has other benefits that you can realize in your organization. The difficulty still is quantifying those and measuring exactly what that means. So those are the key takeaways from our research. I want to thank you all for attending today. If you'd like to get more information on this research, download the report. You can find it on our website. You'll see all the data and the breakouts. Also, I'll recommend a book to you. It's our book on magic, the five keys to unlock the power of employee engagement. It's a great resource for HR directors as well as managers on understanding the drivers of engagement, how it really works in an organization, and what you can do to improve it. Thanks again, everyone, for joining us, and we look forward to having you attend one of our future podcasts.